things. <laughs> Okay, let me check uh, through my other phone. Is it recorded? No. no. Okay, we're live now. Okay. So, if there should be any comments, uh, I will post them. Like, for example, ah, we have somebody commenting. 12L, hey guys. <laughs> Hi, I cannot see. Hi. I'm too small. Hello, everyone. Too small. Hi, hi, hi. Hello. So, today we're doing our first live session on YouTube, also on Facebook. So if you have any comments whatsoever about today's topic, which is all about knife handling, longevity, we have the first person here, the expert, the outdoor educator, you name it, all kinds of certificates, he's been there, done that. So this is actually an actual honor and pleasure to have with us now, Brendan Chi here. Uh, thank you very much, Brendan, for being with us. Hello, everyone. Hi. So, before we start uh, our whole process here, this is actually our Montana first uh, live streaming. So, if let's say you have any questions you want to ask us, feel free to leave a comment. We are also live on another platform, which is on Facebook. So, we are going to do this for at least about half an hour. Because I know, Montanic knows that Brandon is a very busy guy. He's a very professional guy and he really actually took the time off his busy schedule to actually be with us here today. So once again, thank you very much, Brandon. Thank you, Otto. Thank you, Montanic. So where are you now? I am actually in my home in Mount Kiara, my home. <laughs> uh this uh this room is a uh, soundproof room actually can't hear from outside even though my condo is just next to the highway okay okay and i see that you have prepared a lot of items behind you uh, i'm not sure what are those items is it for bush crossing <laughs> as well <laughs> i my uh <laughs> came off Camo fly, uh, fly actually just the car. Actually, you can see outside the, the, the highway. Actually, if I take out, uh, this is a, a library. Actually, library rooms, small little rooms. Uh, yeah, I have my, I display some of the knife here. Okay, so later I can share with you guys as well. Uh, yeah, actually, I put some some metal, some tops here actually. Later, after this, I need to do some carving, right, to, to, to cut some woods, you know, some bamboo. So I need to protect this place as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you for coming, everyone. Oh, uh, well, well, guys, we did so a bit so talk. I'll do my best to share to all of you. Thank you very much. Uh, let me see uh, if I can... Okay, once again, if you've just tuned in, we're currently doing a live streaming, right? And uh, we're joined today by an outdoor educator himself, Mr. Brandon. He took off his uh, very busy schedule to be here with us. And we are very privileged to have him here uh, for just a couple of moments to actually share with us his expertise in handling the knife. So today, we are going to talk about knives, yeah, talking about knives. Uh, everything to do about knives, everything from knife handling to uh, how to make sure that your knife is nice and sharp, making sure yeah, that- talking about knives. Yeah, uh, everything, oops. Uh, 
uh, let me see if I can add this share screen. All right. We're actually live right now, as you can see, on uh, our live streaming. Thank you guys for being here with us. And uh, if you feel that you want to uh, participate in today's live streaming, please do. All right. We are glad to have you guys here. We are just going to do this for uh, less than half an hour. So it's almost, it's already 10 o'clock. So without further ado, I'm going to ask the first Brendan, which is, all right, how do you sharpen a knife? How to, oh, you immediately asked me to how to sharpen a knife. Okay. All right. Basically, uh, knife is a tool. So what I do is, this is my preference, okay, how I sharpen the knife. I actually use uh, sandpaper, okay, a few grains of the sandpaper uh, from 100 uh, sorry, 1,000, 3,000, 5,000, okay? Depends on, on the knife and the, and the blade as well. And at the same time also, uh, I also use uh, diamond sharpener, okay? How to sharpen basically is, uh, and then, oh, before that, uh, sandpaper is very important for me. And then I use a uh, diamond sharpener, okay? And then uh, after sharpen this first stage, uh, then I will use uh, second stage, and the last one is uh, leather. Okay, leather to, to fine tune everything. Okay, so what I do is uh, if I use uh, sandpaper, okay, uh, you got two ways. You can either put something on the flat, okay, or on something soft, okay. Uh, I like to do on the soft part because uh, I can cover the entire knife blade, okay? So normally what I do is, um, to show you a little bit nearer, normally uh, you can do either front, okay? Like this one is a Mora knife, so it's a Scandin grind, so it's very easy to take care and do sharpening. So either I do this way or I pull back, depends on the blade itself. Let's say the blade is uh, quite bad, you know, then I would do, I use a high, uh, like about 1000 grain sandpaper, I will sharpen in front. Okay, if um, nothing much, the blade just a little bit only, not so uh, really, uh, just not so sharp a little bit, okay? So normally I don't do in front like this, I will pull back. Okay, both sides. I'll pull back. All right. Same goes to diamond uh, diamond sharpener like this. Okay. Also, same thing. I'll cover the entire blade. So I go from the bottom to the top, or top to the bottom doesn't matter. I pull back. I like to pull the full back, or you can go in front. Doesn't matter. Okay, doesn't matter. You can do that this way. Okay. I'm not so, I know uh, a lot of people, you know, they're very good in sharpening. I'm very impressed on that, actually. For me, uh, I'm quite rough use. I will sharpen a few times during my... Uh, work and say when I use the knife okay uh, I'm not so particular to up to uh, you know you want to cut your uh, your, your hair that kind of uh, sh sharpness uh. I'm not that so particular on that uh, as long I can still do the work as long as it's still sharp enough uh, it's, it's fine okay uh, of course sharp enough uh, sometimes you need to cut like pepper that kind of sharp would be great normally I would do up to that level okay and then, uh, of course, uh, use the leather uh, to do the final touch, okay? Uh, that one is a scoping. Basically, it's called scoping. Scoping is, uh, is the final step. Uh, 
to age up. Uh, we have actually when we do when you use sandpaper or diamond sharpener, uh, <clears throat> basically we have a leftover, you know, uh, uh, some microscopic level, you know, some burps. Uh, then we need to horn it up, take up the burp. Okay, so normally we use uh, uh, leather. Okay, I'll use leather from from the knife cover like this or any leather you have. Okay, let, when you do stropping, this is important. Huh? You don't against. Okay, you need to pull back. Basically, you pull back. Either you put your knife or you can use your the leather to... Okay, you pull the leather. Or your knife, your leather is... Pull it straight up. Uh, permanent like this, then you pull back. Don't try to go forward. Okay, that is not a good way to do. You destroy your edge later on so you pull back that's a few stroke okay that's good enough all right uh for me i use uh i uh sometimes i straight away use leather to do stroke probably okay uh, when i feel not so not so sharp then i'll immediately I'm not using any diamond uh, or sandpaper to do a straight away. Use the leather. I just do a few strokes. Then it's good enough. Yeah. That's uh, on the sharpening. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Brendan. Now, Derek says, Derek the camper says, Hello, Sifu. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> We have also uh, Edward C says, nice. thank you very much guys for being together with us today. Now, uh, just to recap, uh, Brandon, you just said there's three different ways of sharpening your knife using sandpaper, using uh, another one is diamond sharpener, a diamond, diamond sharpener, and the third one is leather. Leather. leather so if does this work in general let, let's say for example i have my own knife this is my knife here okay. all right now as you can see it's a bit dirty and rusty i haven't sharpened it yet whatsoever yet uh so your advice for me to make sure that this knife stays nice and sharp you use stone paper or should I use the stone uh, uh, or stone sharpener? Stone. You can use the stone, doesn't matter. In the first stage, you can use stone, diamond sharpener or sandpaper, doesn't matter. Okay? Just sharp. Then the last part only, you use the leather. Okay? And, uh, okay, thank you very much. Um, just one more thing for those who just arrived here. Thank you very much for joining us. Let me just uh, introduce our educator, outdoor educator for today. Brandon has been uh, has twenty five years experience in the outdoor education field. He also has very strong interest in bushcrafting, camping, sustainable conservation, and environmental, human capital, wilderness, medical risk management, and so much more. And he has so much certificates that I will mention a few, which is he's a certified national industry expert of land and water-based adventure tour guide from the Ministry of Human Resources, Malaysia. He's also a certified master educator, Need No Trace, LNT. And he's also a certified trainer, TNT award leader and supervisor by the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award Foundation. So together with us, he's a very prestigious guy. He's a very busy guy, a very important guy. We to get. Uh, we appreciate your time here with us on Montani. It's not easy to get Brandon here. So without further ado, let's move on to the next question. So the next question is, once you know how to sharpen your knife, I, I would love to know also, how, how would you handle the knife? Oh, oh, how to handle the knife? Okay, uh, basically, yeah, before we, hand, uh, we, we handle the knife, of course, we need to know how to, uh, how to say, uh, how to take out the knife. That is important. And uh, 
put it back and then uh, how you handle it before you really use the knife okay first thing uh, like this knife for example okay uh, when you open up normally we don't suggest you okay some of the knife some some of the knife like this one they have a very they have a, a, like a leather type of a shield okay and this is a plastic shield okay polymer plastic stick shield so polymer plastic shield is not too bad you know you can really hold like this and then you take out your knife okay but very important is don't put your finger near to the blade to the edge when you pull up the time so you need to be very uh, careful on that this is important okay uh some knife they come with the uh, you know some uh soft shield uh, you, you we don't encourage you to grip like this and then you pull your knife so sometimes you will break you will cut through so you need to hold at the side like this you know okay and then you pull up safer for you all right uh take, take it out and put it back is important so once you're not using it you put it back in the shell that is important okay uh hold the knife properly okay this is normally we call it the forehand grips huh? you hold properly the knife and then uh, of course uh, another uh, fundamental of handling knife is you know you make sure before you use also you need to make sure around you you know nobody near you uh, uh, then before you pull out the knife okay that is important and then, uh, of course, you cut away. That's the basic one. You cut away from you. Of course, uh, later on, when you are more advanced, you have certain technique that you, you cut towards you. Okay? I'll show you later on on that. Uh, so make sure this is the most fundamental one, how handling the knife first. Take out the knife. You need to know how to take out the knife. Put it back. And then uh, make sure surrounding is safe. Okay and uh, a lot of people sometimes they over they put their fingers too near to the shield near to the op opening place and they pull you, you cut your finger okay so that is also you need to be very careful on that okay then uh the next one let's say when you're sitting like this like me like this okay we don't encourage you uh, not 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 don't encourage it's a no no Okay, it's a, it's a triangle of that. This is a V shape here that we have now leg here. You don't cut your knife when you handle your knife. It cannot be too near you. Okay, because here when you cut, you might cut through your, your pipe here. So what you do is further your elbow on your knee. That's the best. Elbow on your other knee. Now your knife is in front of you. This is how you have you hold your knife. Let's say you're in my sitting position like this. Okay. <clears throat> uh, that is very important. This is we call it the triangle of that. Okay. All right. And uh, when you cut also, let's say you do carving like this now. Okay. Uh, you don't be so uh, over ambitious. You know, you want to take out the, the whole chunk a lot. No, you just take slowly bit by bit. Okay. All right, uh, since uh, I've been using uh, Moranif uh, from young until now, you know, um, um, how to handle knife is basically uh, around the, the world, uh, the whole, con the, the entire world, uh, different continent, different country, they have different names uh, on, on how they grip the knife, or how they handle the knife, how they're holding the knife, different, different names. Uh, all the, uh, the basic conditions, the same thing, okay? So, uh, since I'm using Moranif, okay, I'm also, uh, actually, I'm an ambassador for Moranif as well. So, uh, I'll use all the Moranif Swedish grip. I will show you a little bit here. Okay, the first one, uh, very common, very common, is called elbow grip, okay? Uh, basic, hold like a fork, normal, you hold like this, you grip it. Okay, like your forehand grip like that. Okay, elbow grip is quite common. A lot of people use this. Okay, what you need to do is uh, the wood or your bamboo stay with you, don't move. Okay, but the knife is moving. Okay, so you go forward like that. Okay, 
in uh, handling life also uh, we have three points that we need to very uh, we need to watch out okay this this is a point that we sometimes we over we we don't we don't uh, properly use it we get danger of that how is basically we have two uh, three one join here one join here one join here okay this is loose huh? so when we do carving we do cut something we need to lock certain joints so we won't use too much power and then we don't danger the, 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 the risk of using the knife okay uh example like this elbow grip again the wood not moving but we are moving the elbow like this like punching okay certain country they use name punching grip like punch so you punch you punch okay you punch okay another one Another common one, very safe, very useful. Okay, we call it the uh, <clears throat> knee grip. Knee grip is basically you put your knife, put your hand here, it's over your knee here. They have one small hollow place here. All right, you put and then uh, elbow and your shoulder. You need to lock it so you're not moving. You're not moving like this. Okay, so you lock it and then. Your knife is locked, your hand is locked, all locked together. So it's not moving at all. Now, you pull your, you cut your wood or your bamboo, you pull. Okay, this is very safe. You can also take big chunk also if you want. Okay, all right. Best is little bit by little bit because you want to do carving example. Okay, very safe. You lock here, you lock here, you lock here, and then you just pull. All okay, right. Brandon, uh, we have a question. What else says, uh, what type of knife for wood cutting? Sorry again? Uh, Wealth L commented, what type of knife for wood crafting? Oh, what type of knife for wood crafting? Okay. Uh, for Morani, of course, we have a carving knife, okay? Carving knife like this, okay? This is a carving knife, one, two, zero, carving knife. We also have uh, some other carving knife as well. Classic knife, example, two dash, uh, two slash O, classic knife. So this is all good so carving knife. Uh, if let's say what about more, this kind of knife? I cannot see, it's too small. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, uh, uh, of course, carving knife they have a different steel, you know, different laminated steel, all these things, better steel, then you can uh, do better carving, you know, they are short, they are sharp up in front, all this kind of thing. If you have other knife, uh, you can still do certain, uh, certain, um carving let's say example the simple one like example you make chopstick you still use any knife to do okay but if you go slightly advanced you want to make some spoon example or fox example a bowl example you need a proper carving knife to do the job a proper okay. carving knife thank you uh, yeah. unlike this knife right this one is thick when you want to unlock it we have to like uh make sure that it's unclip it so it's a folding for, knife. For, for carving it knife, is. you cannot use a folding knife to do. It's dangerous. You must use a fixed blade. Okay, when you do carving, you must have a fixed yeah. blade knife. You cannot use folding knife. Uh, for safety issues, right? Yeah, for safety issues. And, and the strength. And what the about? Strength. What about? You need some strength to do that as well. Okay, I, I just recently bought this. Uh, it's not a knife. It's uh, <laughs> it's more of a machete. <laughs> so, like you said, all right, just, just like you said, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna unbox this now. All right. So, just to clarify with you, because I, yeah, because I'm still not quite familiar with knives. All right, okay. I'm a beginner. All right, I'm a beginner. We have so many types of knife 
actually in okay i write the uh, different different knife for different usage okay uh for machete it's a very big knife if you want to do carving it's very difficult very difficult unless you cut some oh. big stuff but it is no <laughs> i cannot get it out of the sheet <laughs> Okay, but the whole point is when you're using a machete to carve, what, what is the use for a machete? Machete you need to use for bigger stuff, you know, bigger things. Uh, you chop bigger wood, you clear some path, you know, uh, you need uh, more power. You need to really, you cannot use a small little knife like this to chop a big wood, you know. Nothing, nothing can happen. Yeah, yeah. It's a long time to do. So, Different usage, different knife, different length, different size, different design. Is everything is designed for different usage, different purpose. So, uh, let's yeah, let's exactly. Uh, Desiree asks, uh, to know what type of knives for what kind of usage? Oh, it's too many. It's too many. Uh, when you have uh, a, a a shorter knife, you know, a shorter knife. You use for different different usage. You know, you have a bigger knife. You have bigger usage. Different design, different usage. So it's all depends on the purpose. Uh, what you want to do. You cannot use the uh, uh, let's say example. You know, like this one, the Pathfinder. Okay. To do carving, chopstick you still can do, but you want to do uh like a bowl example. You know, you, you can't use this knife to do. It's not practical. It's not suitable. So you need to change knife to another different knife that's suitable to do. So this is good. Let's say you want to chop trees, you know, arm size, whatever, it's fine. This is a job. This kind of knife you need. But you cannot use uh, a, a, a classic knife like this to chop a arm size tree. So you need to change. Okay. So smaller knife you use, you do for smaller uh things carvings or, or certain other things that more details kind of work you can have a smaller knife fixed blade okay fixed blade is the best and stronger okay that that's the most important thing that you have uh, taught us so far before you buy a knife or any kind of presentation of them you need to know what you want to use it for is that correct oh yes definitely you cannot be you cannot buy a knife for for everything, no, no such. You need to have different purpose. Different knife for a different purpose. Ah, uh, Derek, we is here. Derek, we ask, how about kappa? Oh, kappa. <laughs> <laughs> it's a kappa king there. Oh, X, definitely. X is for bigger stuff, you know. You want to take out more material, more material from the wood example, okay. That is very good to do, use your X, okay. Uh, of course, you want to, uh, you want to chop this log example. Yes, X is a useful one, definitely. Okay. Uh, some people, yes, uh, when they, let's say, example, uh, let's they start the to do some uh, initial part of carving, you know, when you have a lot of, let's say a wood like this, you want to do a spoon, okay, you need to take up a big chunk of the material. You can start off with the uh, X, you know, you want to take up a lot, take up a lot. When you come to the details, then you change to a proper carving knife example. Yeah, I hope oh, okay. you one kilo with the uh, X direct the campers. <laughs> you see, like this one, yeah, it says you can. Uh, this couple actually has a uh, it's a full time, all right. It has uh, a stone wash finish. This one has a stone wash finish. It has a rubber grip. It's a uh, finger grooves. This one, okay. Uh -huh. Now. According to this uh, this brand, you can also do light uh, carving as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely can. For beginning, for beginning parts, when you do beginning part of the carving, 
you can use the X, definitely we use the X. Normally, uh, when the beginning part of the carving example, you take out a lot of material, a lot of woods, you know, you take out a lot. So X is the best to start off. Um, we have another question. I see some Western outdoor cook with machete. <laughs> <laughs> Cooking with machete. And then we have also uh Dario Desri also asks uh, knives with gigi and without gigi. So I think like we have oh. those kinds of uh machete which have a uh, what is it actually useful? Okay, uh some some people say it's like a rainbow knife, you know, you have two, you have a uh, sharp edge, the blade edge, and then you have uh, a gigi like, oh, like a like a song like that. Uh, depends on the design of the knife also. Some is really like a saw, you know, you can really saw it. Some is not, some is uh, used for other purpose, maybe to cut some uh, wire. Okay. Uh, sometimes there's some design they do it, uh, you can use for, uh, to scale the fish example. Okay. So it depends on the knife as well. Uh, uh, I personally prefer uh, to have uh, a knife, have a so-called, one or two function that's it you, you, you don't want to have too many in a knife example okay you have uh, too many structures here you know a, a, a saw on the top example you know here then you have another like a can opener example you know so you 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 will destroy the blade easily the knife easily actually with, with the kind of function okay so uh, I'm not so encouraged uh, for people to buy that kind of knife, like so-called like a rainbow knife, like so some people say, yeah. So uh, if you can okay. have a more plain knife, then you have that. Option. And and some knives have these uh, certain holes. Sorry. <laughs> some knives or some kappa or some uh, machetes oh. have holes here. <laughs> what is the purpose of those holes? Uh, depends on usage. Some people they use the when you have a nail example, you want to take out the nail, so you put the hole inside, and then you use that. that as really? Okay. Okay. Uh, depends on people. Depends on usage on that. Uh, some people they use that uh, to let's say when you want to uh, cut certain back, certain size of. Uh, or wood, you know, certain certain diameters, you know, so they use that as an indicator as well. Oh, I see. Okay, uh, we have another question. So, is it practical to bring two set of knives on outdoor trip to specific bowl tasks and delicate carving task? Bring what again? Bring what again? Sorry, it's a bit breaking the line. Uh, the question there, uh, it's down there. So, it is practical to bring two sets of knives on the outdoor oh. trip? Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, you need to bring uh, at least two, two knife example. Okay, different usage. For me, let's say example, I have uh, uh like my EDC example like this uh neck knife, uh, Moranif Eldris neck knife, is for general use. Okay, when I have uh when I go camping example, I will bring uh like garbage for heavy duty, slightly heavy duty purpose use. Okay. Then for cooking purpose, I will use uh, uh, different knives, like example, uh, Moranif 2000, okay, or, or Ken's bowl, okay. And in the cooking also, uh, let's say if I cut meat, I will use different knife. If I cut veggie or, or some other, not, 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 not meat, I will use another knife. So I, I don't mix around with the knife. And then a certain uh, like general purpose like cutting ropes or whatever you know I can use my elbows to do the job. So best to carry one spare knife with you or two or three if you can. Yeah, that's important. Uh, we have also another question. Uh, how to choose a knife to buy? How to choose a knife to buy? Oh, okay. This is all depends on the few criteria that I, I normally uh, uh, suggest, okay, if you want to buy a knife. First thing, of course, it's a cost, money. What's your budget? Okay. Second thing is the construction, the design of the knife. For what purpose? That's very important. 
because every knife design the construction itself uh, they have a different purpose okay that is important then the third one is about uh how easy for you to resharpen okay or how how's the blade look like uh, how the blade can retain the sharpness is it a standard steel braid, uh, uh, blade example or, or, or carbon steel example okay and then the weight is it heavy or is it light okay also play a role if you have a, like a big machete example it's very heavy and then balance you need to see uh, the knife balance you know when you chop things or you cut things depends on the size that you you, you choose they say like this one pathfinder you know you need to feel it uh, what kind of balance you have when you want to chop things and then uh, of course the handle the handle is important as well uh, some people have a very big uh, hand no palm some people are very small so you need to know and then you need to feel it when you when you buy a knife and you feel you must feel comfortable and then uh of course uh others is uh the maintenance is it uh, easy to get rust you know like example carbon steel blade easy to get rust how you take care of it you know uh, even though standard steels uh still can get rust uh but it takes time but how you take care of it is uh, as well so I think uh, for people to consider to buy a knife, uh, you need to look through all this, your cost, your budget, you know, your design, your purpose, what you want to use. You know, you, you cannot buy a, a parang and then you want to uh, do, you know, cut, cut a, a, a onion example, it's not suitable. Okay, so you need to use see your usage as well before you buy a knife. That is important. Yeah. Uh, which brings us to the next question a knife's longevity how how do you take care of a knife specifically a knife or uh, does it in general compensate uh, your safety and also neck? yeah first thing that uh, a knife user like a knife uh, we, are, we are really pantang a little bit okay we don't put a knife into a sand or a soil okay let's say this is a soil example we don't cho we go and cho -cho 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 like that okay it's not great. Uh, you you not sharp anymore. That is important. Of course, we don't hit the uh, metals. We don't hit metal. Okay. Uh, we need to horn or sharpen the knife regularly. Okay. Uh, after use, uh, we wash the, uh, the knife. Don't wash with detergent. Okay. Uh, very light one is fine, but uh, not the washing detergent is not good. We also. Uh, uh, wash with a hand that's important and then we dry it with a uh, with a cloth okay that is also and then of course after use you need to put inside the shield okay to keep it so that is it uh how you take care of your knife okay for a longer period um uh, yeah that, that i think the most basic one okay so you shouldn't wash with uh detergent don't soap. wash into the washing dish machine as well. Huh? You don't put your knife inside your you know, dishwasher. Dish. Yeah, yeah. Dishwasher. Yeah, dishwasher. Uh, uh, no, no, that is hundred percent no, no. Okay, and I uh, one question I've been asking. Uh, I haven't found anybody can answer me this question. Each knife has its own uh, code. So even though it's called the stainless steel, but each one has its own code number, uh, which identifies uh, what kind of material is in the knife. Is that true? Oh yes, yes, definitely. All the blades, all the blades from stainless steel to carbon steel, all the knife they have a they have a grading, they have a they have a code on it. Different different name, different code, different material, different composition of the material inside all these things. So it all depends on the. Uh, the knife manufacturer and the, the person itself uh what kind of knife they want you know um for me i don't not so particular so much on that okay um uh that one is really some people are very crazy about knife then they will look for for the kind of uh you know uh, very detailed uh, materials that they use uh, okay all right so before i move on to the next uh, different strength as well so it's and uh how they can retain sharpness example for longer example you know all these things are how robust is the knife uh the steel is itself 
it's all depends on the manufacturer and the knife, the, the model itself. Right? Okay, thank you very much. Now, before we move on to the next question, if you have any other questions or you'd like to share, make sure that you share this uh, YouTube one because we have a couple more minutes left. I think we've gone uh, four minutes overboard. So thank you very much, Brendan, for staying up to this point. Okay. Uh, last question. Not last question. This, uh, if I was a beginner, um, what is your advice for those beginners who want to start uh, using a knife? Knife, actually, a lot of people get associated with uh, the knife itself as a, like a, a weapon or something that's very dangerous to use. Okay, Normally, people will think about that. Uh, actually, knife uh, is a tool. It's uh, just another tool. It's like the like your stationary tools, you know, you have uh, eraser inside, your pencil inside, your ruler inside, you know, or scissors inside. So it's just another tools that you need to know, uh, you need to learn how to use it, you need to know the basic guideline, how to use it, and then uh, you know the, the safety-wise, and then you practice how to use it. So it's a tool for you to cut things, okay, and chops or whatever. So uh, use it with a purpose, with a good purpose, properly used as well uh, of course definitely uh, knife can mix wonders and then uh, for me uh, if I go into the jungle I have no other choice you know nothing I can bring or, 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 or they only allow me to bring one items definitely is a knife okay well I have a question here uh, who, who's that? How about oil? When it comes to uh, making sure your longevity of the knife, is there any different type of oil that we should use for carbon steel and stainless steel knife? Uh, Otto, I, I can't hear well. Can you uh, speak again a little bit slow so I can hear? Okay. When it comes to taking care of your knife, how about oil? Oh, okay. is, there, uh, is there any right, difference right. in the oil for carbon okay. steel and stainless steel knife? Uh, uh, for stainless steel, nothing much. You can clear with the water, dry it up. Okay. Uh, for carbon steel, yes. Uh, I sometimes I will use uh, if I don't have any uh, like a single oil. No, I, I will use cooking oil. Doesn't matter. Just put a layer on it. Keep it just like that. So of course, sometimes they will form like patina. Doesn't matter. It still is okay. It won't destroy your your edge. It's just a uh, different color changes on the on the material, especially the carbon steel. So normally I will put uh, cooking oil or single oil like this. Okay, it's good enough. Okay, and Derek Wee says, "Sifu bring one full box of knife, right?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a cool box here. <laughs> and then he also asked, uh steel or stainless steel is better? Which one? Why again? Which one is better? Carbon steel or stainless steel? Oh, it's all depends on you. Uh if you are lazy <laughs> to take care of knife, you know, stainless steel is a, it's, it's a easy to use, easy to take care. Uh, of course, uh, carbon steel, you can retain your knife uh, sharpness longer and uh, easy to sharpen as well, okay? Uh, it's up to you. It depends on your usage, depends on your what uh, purpose you want to use. You cannot use carbon steel knife for cooking, uh, for, for, for cutting meat, example, or, or fruit, for example. Okay, that's not advisable to do. Normally, for, for food, we use, food preparation, we use standard steel knife, okay? And then... Uh, other than that, you can use carbon steel. Carbon steel. Okay, cool. All right. So before we let you go, uh, one last message to everybody out there who is tuning in, uh, who, are, who are interested in knowing about knives or beginner or even expert. Though. What is your advice, your personal, professional advice to those who knives? Sorry again. Uh, what is your message to the viewers out there when it comes to knife? Oh, uh, get a knife. Uh, you must uh, know how to use it properly, safely. 
attend some, uh, if you want to do some knife carving example, attend some proper workshops, and then uh, practice more, and then uh, knife is a tool, it's not, a, it's not a something dangerous or weapon, okay? it's a tool, just like other tools you have, like scissors, okay? you just need to uh, use it uh, properly. Uh, knife, uh, to, uh, is when it's when it's safe, it's basically the knife is very sharp. Okay, the, when the knife is very sharp, it's safe to use. Why I say that is because when the knife is sharp enough, you don't use a lot of strength uh, to cut things. You just little bit strength, you cut through a lot of stuff. So if a sharp, uh, the sharp, the knife is is dull a little bit, now not so sharp, you use a lot of power to cut, and then when you miss. You might injure yourself or maybe others. So make sure your knife always sharp conditions. And then if you're using fixed blade, make sure it's, it's intact. And then if you're using the folding blade example, you need to make sure the joint, the screw is everything is in good order. Uh, and then you use it properly. Okay. Uh, is there anything that uh, you want to tell people how to reach you, uh, where should they go? Uh, or probably to learn more about knife. Oh yeah, I do. I do conduct uh, workshops uh, on knife and then uh, carving example. You know, uh, you can check it out uh, in my Facebook, uh, Bushcraft with Brandon. Okay, uh, then uh, yeah, you can contact me, or you can contact Montanic. They can organize for you as well. Okay. Thank you very much, Brandon, for your time. We've gone like 11 minutes over our uh, proposed plan. <laughs> we appreciate your time. Thank you very much once again. And uh, for those who are from the beginning to the end, thank you very much for your time as well. If you have any questions, if you have any comments about this show, uh, please feel free to message us on our, our social media platforms and uh, we'll get through to whatever mistakes we made and we'll try to improve it in the next one. And if you still want Brandon to come on for the next one, uh, please also leave out a message. You know, we want Brandon or something <laughs> for our next live. For now, uh, thank you very much, Brandon, for your time. Once again, I appreciate it. So be safe. Uh, make sure that you stay safe, eat well, and also uh, stay healthy. All right? Thank you very much, Brandon. See ya. Bye. I mean, stay alive, Otto. All right, guys. Thank you very much uh, to Brandon. We'd like to say a big thank you to for for his time, actually. So this is actually uh, our first live stream. And uh, we'd like to tell you guys that if you have, once again, if you have any questions or you have any feedback for us, Please leave a comment in the comment section below. And after this uh, live stream ends, we'd also appreciate if you leave a feedback in each of our any platforms when we're doing this kind of uh, uh, live streaming. Because uh, sometimes there are some technical issues which we might not even foresee. So your feedback truly is uh, very important to us. Okay. So once again, also if you want any other topics you want us to discuss, you know, when it comes to outdoor activities before. The MCO blows over, you know, and we can go back out. So if there's anything you want to ask about camping, let us know what kind of topics you want us to actually highlight. And we'll be glad to uh, bring in experts for you guys to make sure that uh, you guys have the greatest adventure when it comes to outdoor activities. All right, guys. I'm Otto for Montanic Adventure Channel. Thank you much, guys, for your time. And uh, see you in the next one. Bye.